So NCM PCPP seems to be one of the most popular and most recommended MPD players, and after experimenting with it for a while, I can really start to see why. So obviously it does all of the basic stuff you'd want a media player to do. So you can go and press enter on a song to play that song. You can pause the song by pressing P and you can unpause the song by pressing P again. You can switch to the next song in your playlist by pressing the greater than sign or the previous song by pressing the less than sign. You can seek forward in a song by pressing F or holding it down. You can seek backwards by holding down B. You can, uh, what else can you do? You can stop playing a song by pressing S and that will just stop the playlist altogether. And you've also got some level of mouse support as well. So if I go and click on this song, I think if I right click on it, yeah. Right clicking on it plays it, or I can just click around. If I had a big list that was long enough to scroll through, I'd be able to scroll through it with my mouse. And you can also control your play modes as well, which are all indicated up in the corner right here. I've only got one of them enabled right now. That is for random mode. So if you want to disable that, that can be done by pressing Z again. So if we press R, that will enable repeat mode. So repeat is basically repeat the current song that you're on right now. So I'm going to disable that for now. We can also press Y, which will enable single play mode, which basically means play one song and then stop playing music altogether. If you press capital R, that will enable consume mode. So basically it will play the song in the playlist and then remove it from the playlist. And you can also press X and that will enable crossfade, which basically means if you finish a song, it will then fade into the next song rather than being a hard end of the first one. I don't really like that feature. I think it sounds kind of weird. But all of that stuff you'd expect to see in basically any media player. If you want to see the rest of the keys, you can get to the help menu by pressing F1. So what makes this one special? Well, one of the things that makes it special is the music visualizer. So if we go and play the song, basically it's a music visualizer. I don't think I need to explain how this actually works. But if we go and press space, that will switch between the different modes. So that is the sound ellipse here. This is the sound wave. This is the sound wave field, and the one that I run it on is the frequency spectrum. But if you want to use the music visualizer, it won't actually work out of the box. You need to do some configuration to both MPD and also to NCM PCPP as well. So let's go over to the MPD configuration first, because that I need to explain something about the way that the audio and MPD actually works. So if we go down to this one here, and into the MPD conf, and apparently I've already got it open, but... I don't think I do. Anyway, what we need to add are these two sections right here. So this one right here is for the system audio. And then this one right here is for the audio visualizer. Now, if you just add in the section for the audio visualizer, what basically happens is MPD will default to only outputting audio to the visualizer and won't output any audio to the actual system. So make sure that you include this section right here if you're using Pulse Audio. If you're using Ulsa, you have to include this section as well, but the actual data you put in here is a little bit different. I'll leave a link down below to the MPD wiki which explains that. And then over in the NCM PCP configuration, we need to add in these two lines down here. So the visualizer underscore FIFO underscore path, and we need to set that to the path value that we had in the audio output in the first document. And we also need to give the visualizer an output name. So I've just called it my FIFO, the name doesn't actually matter. And the rest of the stuff I have in here is just for configuring the look of the actual visualizer. And once you've done all that, your visualizer should be working perfectly fine. So the next thing I wanna talk about is the way that playlist works. So it's a little bit confusing when you first try it out, but if you press one, that will take you to your playlist screen. If you press two, that will take you to a file browser. And then if you press five, that will take you to the playlist editor. So this is a bit confusing when you first try it out, but this isn't any specific playlist you've actually got loaded. So if I say, I don't know, uh, start deleting songs from here by pressing delete, this isn't actually modifying the playlist that I've got loaded. This is just modifying, the, I guess, the temporary loaded playlist you have right here. So if you actually want to save whatever playlist you've got here, so let's actually go and delete everything in here. That can be done by holding down delete or by pressing C. And let's go over to the file browser. So if we start playing songs in here, that will actually add them into our playlist or we can press space on them and that will add them without actually playing them. So let's just add this, 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 and this. So if we go back to screen one, we'll see that we have those songs in the playlist. So now if I actually go and press capital S, that will actually prompt us for a name for this playlist. So let's just call it uh, a playlist. 
And now if we go to the playlist editor, we actually have this playlist saved in here. But let's say I've realized I want to add some songs to this playlist. So let's go back to the file browser. And if I press shift up or shift down, that will actually let us select a song and then go in that direction. So shift down, shift down, shift down. And then if we press A, it's going to give us this window right here to actually say what we want to do with these songs. So if we want to add them into one of these playlists, into the current playlist, or into a new playlist. So let's go and add it into a playlist, the one that we just made. And if we go back to the playlist editor now, as we can see, all those extra songs in there. And the same can be done from this screen as well. So let's actually go in here and select this, 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 and this and then press Dell, and that will actually delete them from this playlist. And if you want to delete the playlist itself, basically just go and select the playlist and press Dell on the playlist, and it will prompt you for a deletion. And if you add a set into the config file, you'd also be able to do it from the file browser as well, but I don't actually have that line in my config right now. So viewing your songs in a big list like this isn't really the most efficient way to find stuff, even though you can press slash and actually do a search for stuff. So let's say we search for live, that will then take us to that song. It's not really the best way to search for stuff. What you can do instead is press four and that will take you over to your media library. And by default, it's gonna be sorted by artists. So let's say we go into Calliope Mori and then we have the albums that she's made right here. And then that breaks down the song. So nothing super special here, but it is a bit of an easier way to actually find your songs. But let's say you're the sort of person who keeps around thousands of songs. Well, in that case, you probably want something a bit more powerful. So if you press three, that will take you over to the search engine. So this basically breaks it down into the various ID3 tags you have available, and then you have in any category as well. So this one will match on any of the metadata tags, and obviously these ones will only match on their specific names. So let's say we search for Kali, and that will show all of our songs by Calliope Mori. And there we go, we have all four of those songs. So this gives you a very powerful way to do a search. Now, as you can see, right now I'm not actually using a regex, but you can go and enable those inside of the config files. So if you want to do more than just a fixed string search, that can be done. So all of that same stuff we saw before in the browser and the playlist can also be done from the media library and the search engine as well. So if I say, go and select these songs right here, and then I press A, it will actually prompt us to add them into a playlist. So basically, all of the screens act in a very consistent way. Now, one thing to keep in mind with the search engine is it's only really going to be useful if you actually set your metadata tags properly. And luckily for us, there is a tag editor built into this. So if we press six, it will take us over to the tag editor the screen. Now, I'm not a fan of how this does it. So as you can see, we have all of the titles here. But if we scroll down, we sort of have to remember where stuff is actually kind of located. It should probably show you like the file name or something here but it doesn't do that by default. And I don't know if there's a way to enable that. So as you're editing stuff, you sort of have to remember where stuff is, or if you press I on it, it will give you information about the song, but that's a little bit inconvenient to do. But anyway, ignoring that problem, the way that this works is pretty straightforward. So let's say we want to modify the title of this song right here. So if we press enter on that, it will prompt us for a new title. So let's get rid of the cover part here. And then it's actually saying this line right here has been modified. So let's go and modify the artist for that song as well. So let's just take off Kiara's name. Now, if we actually go back to our file browser or our playlist, we'll notice that nothing has actually changed because the tag editor is actually just modifying everything in a buffer right now. So nothing will be changed until you go and actually select the save button down here. So feel free to go and break everything. As long as you don't press that save button, nothing will be modified. So if we actually go and do that now, it's gonna go and write everything in the database. And if we go back to the, let's go to the file browser. And if we go to Bluebird here, as we can see, that one has been changed now. So I cannot possibly cover every single thing this application can do in one video. So I'm gonna be coming back to this a couple of times. I don't know how many videos I'll make from it, I don't know what I'll cover in them, but I will definitely be, I guess, coming back to this and talking about some extra things, whether that be how to do some visual configuration like I've done here, because this is not how it looks out of the box. I've done a little bit of tweaking to make it look way better. So I might talk about that. I might talk about some of the extra features I didn't cover. Uh, I don't know what else I'll talk about. There's plenty of stuff to talk about, so I'll work it out when I get to that. So my config will be available on my GitHub down below, so feel free to check that out if you want to see it.
So if there's anything you're not sure about how to do, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll try to answer it. I don't know if I'll be able to provide the best answer possible, but I'll try to at least give you an answer from what I've noticed with this application. But for now, I think the best place to get your information from is go dig through the man page and try to find what you're looking for. But there's a lot of things to set, so it might take you a while. So as you can probably tell, I really love this music player. As soon as I started using MPD, this is the first thing I tried out and yeah, it does everything I could possibly want it to do. Now, I do still plan to try out other music players for various videos, but I think this is going to be my main music player going forward. And hey, maybe I'll find out something that I really don't like about it, but for now, I think it's pretty awesome. Does it do too much? Absolutely. I have a standalone tag editor that I normally use called ID3, and that one does way more than this tag editor and is way easier to use. So that's what I'm going to continue using going forward, but it's still a nice feature to have there if you do need a tag editor. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video, but before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim Corbinian, Andrew Craig, Nathan Montezla, Chico Bento, Joseph Pitti, Road, Tony, Brennan, Donald, John, Merrick and Kel, Nate Dog, Nephite, Poe, Tease, and Zilva. If you want to go and support my work, there's links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, star, leave and pay, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And this channel is available on Library, Odyssey, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.